Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits a Lot. My name's Jolene, and this is my show about knitting and crafts and whatever else I get up to. So thank you for joining me, and hello. Um, welcome back if you are a long time viewer, and by long time, I mean, I think this is my ninth episode, so thanks for joining me. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, given the current um, political climate in the United States and the amount of upheaval and the incredibly crass display of white privilege um, at the US Capitol in the last couple of weeks, I just want to take a moment at the start of this episode to let you know where I stand. Um, now I know I'm Canadian and you may think that um, I shouldn't be commenting on US politics and that's fair, but a lot of the um, issues that are uh, racial issues that are active right now in the United States are active here in Canada too and I want you to know where I stand so I believe strongly that black lives matter I believe that indigenous lives matter I believe that love is love and I believe in the power of coming together and inclusivity and learning from people no matter what they look like or where they're from. So I want you to know that's where I stand. And if that's not how you feel, then I hope you can find um, a podcast that maybe suits your beliefs or your interests better. Um, but I believe in inclusivity. I believe that everyone is welcome. And so um, thank you for joining me and thank you for letting me have a moment to tell you where I stand and what I believe in. So thank you. Um, having said that, I hope that you are uh, joining me today because you have an interest in knitting, but maybe you are uh, a crocheter, maybe you do embroidery, maybe you do other crafts, and I think that maybe today is the day for you because um, I have a lot of different crafts that I'd like to share with you today. In the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had a couple of birthdays in my house. My husband's birthday is two days before mine, and so we've had a lot of cake in the last couple of weeks. Uh, my lovely daughters, who are 14 and 12, baked us a red velvet cake with cream cheese icing, so that was really nice. I don't think we've ever had that for birthday cakes um, around here, um, so that was pretty special. I have been very, very fortunate to be spoiled by my friends and family with lots of birthday wishes, um, lots of um, doorbell ringing with a package left, <laughs> and then waves from my driveway. <laughs> so that was really, really nice. It's been a strange year with COVID uh, without being able to get together with the people that we love. Um, and so it was really, really nice to feel um, thought of, to be a to be remembered on my birthday and to have those little gifts dropped off on my doorstep was a real treat. Um, so thank you very much <clears throat> for all those people who left me thoughtful gifts. Um, so that, that's one thing I wanted to share with you. Um, something else that has come up in the last couple of weeks is that uh, the Prairie Fiber Festival, which I told you about on my very first episode, um, it happens in Lacombe, Alberta in the fall every year. Uh, has announced that I will be teaching a colorwork knitting class. I'm super excited about that. I have been teaching colorwork knitting for a number of years now. And by colorwork knitting, I mean stranded knitting. So holding, um, in this case, it's working with two colors and holding one color in one hand and one color in the other hand. I talk a lot about um, what kind of yarns to choose, what colors, how to choose colors uh, for stranded color knitting, how to achieve a really um, uniform fabric while you're doing stranded knitting and how to best um, present your knitting when it's all finished. So if you are in the greater Lacombe area in September, uh, I encourage you to check out the Prairie Fiber Festival website. I'm going to leave a link in the uh, show notes below so you can check it out. Um, but I'm super excited to be teaching there this year. I have taught at um, local yarn stores and I've also taught at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic in the past. So I am uh, really looking forward to meeting knitters uh, who have an interest or are um, keen to start to color knitting. Um, 
so I look forward to meeting you hopefully in the fall. I will show you some pictures of uh, the design that I use. This is a design that I made uh, myself for the purposes of teaching. It's called Lambs and Use. So it's got some mama sheep and some baby sheep. Uh, and it just gives you an opportunity to practice the, two, the techniques involved in two color knitting. I have other um, color work patterns if you're interested in checking out my patterns. They're all on Ravelry. So if you look me up on Ravelry, on Ravelry, my name is J-O-L-I-N-E. Um, I always leave that at the end of the show. So uh, have a look, uh, come and friend me on, on Ravelry if you like, and uh, have a look at some of my patterns. I have a number of them there. Uh, some of them are more simple color work and some of them are slightly more complex. So if it's something that you're interested in, I encourage you to look into it and uh, let me know if you're interested in any of my patterns. Um, speaking of Ravelry, I've been wondering if there would be any interest in starting a Ravelry group for this podcast. I think it might be a nice place to, to uh, just meet other knitters. Um, I think it might be a great way for me anyway t to learn more about you and to uh, find out what you're knitting and what you're interested in so please comment below if that's something that interests you um, I know that Ravelry has had some accessibility issues in the past um, I believe that some of them are resolved if Ravelry is not uh, accessible to you um, I'm trying to think of other ways to connect with you as viewers. So uh, one of the, um, sorry, I'm slightly distracted because there's a tiny little squirrel running across my fence and it is absolutely adorable. Goodbye, little squirrel. Okay, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so if Ravelry is not something that is accessible to you, then I wonder if maybe um, Instagram is uh, an another place where we might sort of connect. I have started to use the hashtag Jolene Knits a lot. Uh, because boy, is it ever true. Um, and I, m maybe that's something that we can use to sort of um, connect on, on uh, Instagram or in other ways. So let me know if you have ideas in, in the comments below. The other way that we can c communicate uh, with each other or just start to get to know each other is in the comments. So I love reading your comments. They mean so much to me. I uh, really appreciate if, you, if there's something that you really liked or want to learn more about or want to hear more about or uh, are not interested in, let me know. Uh, I'm completely open to, to hearing from you and I look forward to meeting more of you. Um, so thanks very much. Uh, yoga. I had, uh, I think I'd mentioned last time that I had started a 30 day yoga journey. Is that the right word? It seems very um, new agey journey. Um, but I started a, a 30 day yoga program with Yoga with Adrian. It started on well, the first video was January 1st, but really the yoga started on the 2nd. And I'm happy to say that I have been managing to do it every day. I have just started getting in the habit of um, getting up somewhat early, um, rolling out of bed, getting ready, and just doing the yoga right away. And I've been finding that when I start the yoga, I'm pre still pretty sleepy. <laughs> but by the time I'm done the 20 to 30 minute yoga video, sometimes it's longer. Um, I feel more awake. I feel more um, sort of, I guess not alive, but I feel more um, just rejuvenated. I feel a bit more uh, ready to face my day. So it's been a really great thing for me this January and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm about halfway through the month and so I'm quite happy to say that I've been uh, doing quite well with it and if it's something that you think you might want to try yoga with adrian has a lot of 30-day yoga streams she's done a number of them and if you want to sort of get to dip your toe into yoga or some sort of exercise practice at home i think it's a great way to ease in um she has a number of videos check them out if you're interested um and let me know if it's something that you are uh, enjoying. I know I have actually connected with other knitters who I follow either through Instagram or through their YouTube channels and they are also doing this 30 day yoga um, experience and it's been really interesting to hear from other people in other places who are doing the same thing I am every day so that's pretty cool. 
I have one other announcement before I get into the actual crafting and that is before Christmas uh, I think I told you about the Stranded Knit Along a Festive Sock Along. Stranded uh, is a podcast by Amy Florence who lives in Scotland now and every year in like October, November she hosts a Festive Sock Along where you knit um, seasonally appropriate socks and uh, are entered to win prizes and I want a prize. Can you believe it? I'm so excited and I'm so excited to share it with you. So it just arrived this week. In fact, it arrived on my birthday. So that was really, really lovely. And in the prize, I got this really cute project bag. It's made by Wool Point. Um, and it's really, really cute. Can you see that it's sort of a metallic -y gold print on top with a really lovely, I think it's like a linen, a deep charcoal linen bottom. It is lined in a brown fabric. And here's her card. She is uh, from Europe. Um, she It's Wool Point, Wool and More, Handcrafted Accessories, Exclusive Yarns, Unique Fabrics, and more. So I got this really cute bag, and then I also got this skein of yarn. This yarn is from a, a dyer called Forgiving Fibers. Um, it is a luxurious, colorful, and soft hand-painted woolen fibers for you. 100% 100 superwash merino wool in a DK weight. And this is the colorway piece. Isn't it pretty? I really like the, the gold tones and the blues and the greens and the little specks of color. So when I opened this up, um, I sort of thought these this yarn would make a really lovely pair of mittens. I've sort of had mittens on the brain lately. Um, usually once a year or a couple times a year I start making some mittens. They're certainly uh, a necessity <laughs> where I live and uh, this I have two daughters who are growing and they're not that much smaller than I am and they always steal my mittens so whether it's uh, some nice two color mittens that I've made whether it's a pair of hand mitten hand knit mittens that my friend have made for me they all seem to go to them so uh, I'm thinking that I should start knitting some extra mittens to go around this place and when this uh, skein of yarn showed up as a prize I thought that would make a really really lovely cute little pair of plain mittens just stockinette stitch uh, I plan on using the simplest mitten pattern by um, tin can knits which is a lovely free pattern that you can knit mittens in any gauge of yarn with any um, weight of yarn that you have and so I'm looking forward to turning this beautiful prize into a pair of mittens that I can tuck into this lovely bag while I'm knitting so thank you very much for giving fibers and wool point thank you very much Amy from the stranded um, podcast uh, for this lovely prize and now, back to Jolene's knitting. Um, you may have noticed that I am wearing something that may look familiar to you. This is the Kaleidoscope sweater. Yay! Check it out, I finished. Woo -woo. I'm gonna put some pictures uh, up now of the finished project. This sweater was such a quick knit. It is knit on size 12.75 millimeter needles. It uses really great um, kind of thick and thin yarn by Knit Collage. It's a very simple pattern, top down with a little bit of crochet around the neck and the hems. And uh, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I knit it up super quickly. It was a real delight. And actually now that I'm wearing it, I thought it would be really hot because of the weight of it, but it's actually just kind of uh, a cozy, kind of sweatshirty kind of feel. Um, I love the length of the uh, arms that I made. They're a little bit um, short and um, as I've told you before I have somewhat short arms <laughs> but uh, I like that they aren't getting in my way because because this is a very bulky weight sweater and there's no uh, ribbing it's just kind of an open cuff as you can see if they went much further I think that I would find them uh, annoying or that they would get in the way but this way it's kind of they're kind of a, a bracelet length almost and um, I'm really happy with how they turned out and I'm quite cozy in this little sweater 
Um, it's the Kaleidoscope Sweater by Nick Collage, and uh, I'm just delighted, and I'm so glad that you could be along for the ride. I do have some yarn left over. This uh, sweater took less than four skeins of Nick Collage Spun Cloud. Spun Cloud is a very bulky yarn. It is about 100 yards in 200 grams. So it's quite a um, robust yarn, <laughs> uh, but I bought five skeins because I wasn't sure how many I'd need for my size. I wanted to make it a little bit longer than uh, the original, and I used about three and a half balls of yarn, which means I have about one and a half balls of yarn left. I have great plans for the rest of my yarn. Knit Collage is, had started a knit along in the fall. If you remember, I made the Plaid-tastic scarf. Um, and that was so much fun and they decided to extend the knit along till the end of February. So I have enough yarn left over from my scarf and my sweater to make a plaid-tastic hat. Fingers crossed I have enough yarn. It might be cutting in close. But, so I'm looking forward to making that hat which should be a really quick knit. And then I have a whole extra skein of the spun cloud. Um, I bought some more minis and I'm planning on making a plaid-tastic scarf for um, a loved one in my life who may or may not watch this channel so I'm not going to tell you who it is but um, I have big plans to make another scarf uh, for a gift later on uh, this year so I will keep you in the loop as I start those um, I plan on knitting both of those projects by the end of February to just sort of stay in touch with that knit along because it's been so much fun um, again, Knit Collage has been a lot of, uh, ha have offered a lot of support through their Knit Along. There's lots of videos for every pattern showing techniques and how to finish your project. And they also offer a lot of online support through Facebook uh, communities and videos and posts on social media. So it's been really fun. I believe they plan on starting another uh, knit along in the spring. So if it's something that you have enjoyed hearing about or think that you might be interested in, um, keep your eyes peeled and I will try and let you know when I hear about the spring knit along. So knit collage, um, kaleidoscope sweater, which is what I'm wearing and also a finished object this week. I only have one other finished object this week. One other pair of knitted or finished objects this week and they're not knitting. Um, they, they are uh, just a couple of little hot pads that I made. So for some reason this year I have been feeling cr sort of more creative and more wanting to play with craft instead of just using craft as a way of finding comfort or um, feeling uh, like I'm uh, being productive or creative. So uh, I dug out my daughter's um, loom. It's the traditional uh, loom that creates a, I think it's called a seven inch loom and it uses loops and you just weave. It's nothing fancy, but I made a couple of little hot pads to play with color. This one was inspired by the Pantone colors of the year this year, which are yellow and gray. And it's just a simple little pot holder. And this one kind of took the design from this pot holder, which is almost like a plaid, almost kind of tartany feel and I just blew it up with some other crazy colors um, just for fun just to play uh, and so that was really fun and I think I might be doing that every once in a while I uh, actually have a number of these pot holders uh, in my house some I made some I made some my daughters made and I find them really useful and so I've just been playing with colors so I have a couple of hot pads <laughs> Uh, which may or may be gifted to somebody or they may just go in my kitchen drawer um, but they were lots of fun just to sort of think in a new way and to stretch my brain in ways um, outside of my normal I guess or outside of what I have normally been doing having said that back to knitting um, my work's in progress. So uh, having finished one cream sweater, I only have one more cream sweater to share with you. And that is the Snowy Forest um, sweater. This is a sweater uh, by Midori Hyros. She published this pattern in the most recent issue of Lane Magazine, which again, um, I've really been enjoying slowly reading through the articles in that um, magazine. 
and I've made some progress on this sweater. So the last time I showed it to you, I think it was just, I hadn't quite divided for the, um, the body and the sleeves yet. So I took the opportunity to tack down that um, collar. The collar is a one by one knitted collar and it, you knit it quite long and then you fold it in and seam it in. So I just tacked it down on the inside, uh, making sure to keep, keep that um, neck edge really stretchy because I didn't want it to constrict when I was sewing it down. I was also very careful when I was sewing it down to make sure that the neck ribbing didn't twist or skew as I was knitting it on the inside. So I had to do it sort of over a couple of times to make sure that I had it really uh, lined up correctly. But I, I feel like it's looking pretty good. So I had to, I have tacked down the um, neckline and then I have finished all of the ribbing. I have completed one little sleevey and two little sleeves and now I'm just working straight down on the body um, heading towards ribbing. Uh, this has been a really enjoyable knit because once I got past these cables which were fun to knit and interesting it's just been a lot of stockinette. Now you can see here that um, there is a little bit of raglan shaping here before you get to the armpit and then a really quite relatively short sleeve because the um, yoke of this sweater is quite deep. So the, that means that the armpit is going to be kind of more down here. So it's going to be like a shorter sleeve and a longer yoke. Um, these sleeves are knit just straight down and then there's some pretty rapid decreasing before a cuff. This cuff looks very tiny, but it is a one by one ribbing and I can totally get my hand in and out easily and it stretches quite nicely but I do like that look and I think that when I wear it it'll be quite a nice um, slim cuff and then a puffy sleeve which I think will be pretty and I don't have a lot of sweaters like that so this sweater uh, is coming along quite nicely I really just have another inch or two left on the body before I start the ribbing the ribbing is quite long it's about three inches possibly more um, so that'll add some length to the sweater itself. I have about this much, I have about, I have exactly this much yarn <laughs> left. Um, and so I think that I should be just fine. And what I may do is just knit um, the amount of stockinette that I need to knit. And then when I switch to ribbing, I'm just gonna keep going. And if I run out a little short, then I'll just bind off, that's fine. But I, I should have enough. The yarn that I'm using is Haynes Creek Heathers. It's by Gathering Yarns, and uh, it's been actually quite um, nice to knit with. I'm really happy with the with the way that the cables turned out. I feel like they really stand out quite nicely. And if you remember last time, I think I was talking about how um, the yarn that I'm using wasn't getting the gauge that the pattern required. So I ended up going down needle sizes. I'm knitting this sweater on a five millimeter needle for the body and I used a four and a half millimeter for the ribbing. Um, so that means I had to change the size that I was knitting in order to get um, a finished piece that was the size that I wanted. So I'm, cur I'm using the numbers for the size number eight and I'm aiming for a finished sweater that is a size number five. Um, and I talked a little bit about the math last time, but the body itself I think was going to be plenty big. It's, I will have lots of positive ease and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting on with this sweater and getting it finished. I've had to play with my lighting a little bit because it turns out that um, mornings in Alberta with the sun quite low um, offer some strange lighting opportunities. So um, I've turned on a bit of lighting. I may look a little brighter now, um, but let's just roll with it, shall we? So um, I have been working on the Snowy Forest sweater and it's coming along nicely. If you remember from last week, I also started an embroidery project. I don't know, who am I? It was the Yarn for Days um, embroidery uh, pattern. This is a pattern by uh, Knitted Bliss. She also does um, knitting patterns and she has her own website, which I'll link to below. Um, but this is my Yarn for Days project. It's really coming along quickly. And I feel like those colors are pretty accurate on screen. It's been really fun to just poke around with 
poke around with. Um, just for something different and it was kind of like those um woven pot holders that i did just a a fun sort of project to um exercise my brain in a different way or like flex the muscles of my brain in a different way uh this has done exactly the same thing it's been uh fun to just pick up and work on a little bit at a time i think it's turning out quite nicely uh the balls themselves my balls uh, are not perfect uh, but neither are we are balls that you roll up so I'm not being too fussy about it but I think it's turning out, out quite uh, quite nicely if you remember last time I let you know that the kit that I got was missing some yarn and uh, I emailed uh, the pattern designer she very quickly mailed out a whole nother set of yarn to me so I had or not yarn <laughs> floss um, so I have uh, duplicates of most of the colors um, so I have lots of floss I'm not worried about running out and uh, I am looking forward to finishing this little uh, picture in the next day or two and I think it's sort of opened my eyes to um, other crafts and it has reminded me of um, cross stitch so I think that I may be once I finish this project I may be uh, looking into uh, getting a, a new cross stitch picture to work on something um, that I again I can just sort of pick up and work on here and there there's no rush it's not for any um, I don't have any deadlines or anything but it's been really enjoyable to work on uh, so this is the yarn for yarn for days by knitted bliss uh, and because of this picture I guess I sort of became aware that my friend's daughter who is uh, very much the same age as my youngest daughter they're one day apart um, she has been doing embroideries and posting on instagram who knew so um i was excited to learn that and sort of touch base with her she's got some really cute pictures and i think what i may be doing with all of the floss that is left over from this project is sending it over to um, my friend's daughter to see if she can make use of it um, because she's been doing some really creative things an embroidery hoops so that's really cool and I would love to see more of what she's doing um, and maybe try my hand at some other projects myself okay um, and just when you thought that was enough new crafts I have one more excursion from the knitting world uh, this is crochet <laughs> crochet is actually the first sort of maybe it wasn't the first um, I think that little embroidery kits when I was a kid was sort of my first foray into crafting um, and I remember do, having like a, a colored canvas and you would just sort of make the stitches according to the color it's kind of like paint by number but with yarn and I remember the back of my work just being a tangled mess I was not very good at it at that time um, However, you live and you learn. Um, but the next thing that I sort of adventured into was crochet. My uh, baba, my mom's mom, crocheted quite a, quite a lot, actually. I remember wearing crocheted hats that she had made, uh, and she would crochet doilies. If I could tell you the number of crochet doilies I have for my baba. Um, and at one point, she crocheted a blanket, like a full-size blanket, for all of her five children and then one for each of her 14 grandchildren so she crocheted 19 blankets and I think most of them are the same pattern um, the woman was productive <laughs> and um, I remember wanting to learn how to do something with my hands so when I was about 10 years old I remember being at my Baba's house I think that my parents my parents who were teachers uh, were probably at teachers convention uh, which would have been in the winter and so we would have been sort of uh, inside um, playing after spending like a few hours outside running around their farm uh, coming inside to warm up and asking my baba to teach me how to crochet uh, I remember I used it was a very pink acrylic -y kind of yarn and I had a sort of standard metal crochet hook that she would have had lying around and she 
um, would have chained a number of stitches and taught me a very basic stitch. I think it may have been a single crochet or what we would call a single crochet in um, Canada, America. Um, and I, I remember crocheting back and forth and back and forth and making like a scarf, I guess. But it, w it was, you know, like this, like this, like this. Um, it was interesting, but I learned how to crochet. And um, I crocheted sort of on and off here and there, making little things. Um, I never really took to it in the same way uh, that I did to other crafts. Like it was something I could learn to do and I enjoyed doing it, but um, I think I always thought that knitting was more versatile in terms of what you could make, uh, in terms of sweaters, socks, mittens, but at the same time, I found knitting to be intimidating because it was two sticks rather than one stick. Um, so crochet is sort of where I started. Uh, and it wasn't until I was an adult uh, in university that I learned how to knit from my sister-in-law. So crochet was where kind of the yarny craft started for me. Um, and I, uh, in the last few years, I crocheted a granny stripe um, blanket. Now this is something that many many knitters have taken to it's a really good sort of beginner foundational um, crochet project in the sense that you're using basically one stitch and you uh, can make a quite successful blanket so that blanket that i started my other crochet stripe blanket i started in um, 2017 and i worked on a few for a few months and then i put it away and uh, did nothing with it for years <laughs> Um, until last spring when I remember I sort of thought you know if I just worked on it um, I did a little bit every day then I could have a blanket in a relatively short period of time because I had done probably at least two-thirds if not three-quarters of it already so it really didn't need all that much doing um, that project again was uh, had a very tight chain so it's a little bit pulley in on one end uh, the edges of that one are a little wonky, <laughs> wobbly. It's not perfect, uh, but I crocheted an edge on it and I use it uh, quite a lot. And I really actually enjoyed crocheting it once I got back to it. And so I've been toying with the idea of making another one. I don't really have a need for a blanket. It's not something that we require. We have a lot of blankets in this house. Uh, but I thought it just would be a nice way to use up um, odds and ends of fingering weight yarn. And uh, so I started one. I had, I've been sort of making, making magic knot balls for the last little while, just with odds and ends of fingering weight yarn. A magic knot ball is when you take yarn and you, um, you start a ball, and when you get to the end of that ball, you can make a magic knot, uh, which is a knot used in crochet um, that can, you can tie the two ends together and it really shouldn't come undone. I will leave a link below to a video on how to make a magic knot. So you magic knot your next yarn on, tie it really tight, cut the ends, and then keep going. The first crochet blanket I did, I was quite uh, precious about. I did one stripe in one color, I get to the end, I would uh, make a magic knot, start a new color, and go back. So it's, it's all single stripes, one color at a time. This one I thought, I just want to enjoy the crochet. Um, it's going to be a little bit more random, a little bit more hobo chic. Let's go with that. Um, and so I just made some magic knot balls with whatever yarn I had kind of lying around in sort of mm, sort of a, a jewel tones um, or colors that I liked, I guess. And the other day I just started and it's been going really well. Um, I chained about 300 stitches, but you don't need to be too fancy about that. Um, this is a pattern by Attic24, which I will link to in the show notes below. Um, and you just make these little clusters of three stitches. And you just crochet. You crochet away. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is the uh, size of my blanket currently, which is really more of a scarf but considering i just started it mm, maybe last weekend I'm doing pretty good and it, it again is just something that i pick up and i work on um with crochet i 
I do have to look at what I'm doing. I can't just um, knit with or crochet without looking the way I can knit without looking. Uh, but it's been nice to try my hand at something different and just, again, exercise a different part of my brain. So this is a project um, that is going to be on the hook, on the hook for quite some time. It's going to take a while to uh, get an actual blanket size object, uh, but I'm okay with that. I'm just going to pick away at it. Um, you know, from time to time. I probably won't show you every episode because it's kind of boring to see the same project over and over again. But when I make some significant progress, I might just pull it out and show you, um, just and just keep you sort of updated on how, on how it's going. I am using, um, as I said, fingering weight yarn. This is the sort of end of the first um, magic knot ball that I made. I have two more rather large balls. And, uh, I'm just going to be working on or working away at it. I use this little needle. It is, um, sorry, hook. It is a size E or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, I bought it when I made my first crochet blanket and so I picked it up again. I really like the handle. It's quite um, grippy and soft um, and I prefer it to the metal crochet hooks I remember using. Um, when I was a kid. My cast on chain, is that what you call it? My initial chain, <laughs> I used a, a slightly larger needle because I didn't want to have that pulley any sort of tight um, edge. So I used a four and a half millimeter hook for the original chain and then everything else has been on the 3.5 millimeter hook. Um, again, I will leave a link to the recipe. It's really more a recipe than a pattern. Um, if you're interested in starting your own granny stripe blanket or if you've been working on one and you would like to join me in my little uh, adventure to make a blanket this year, I sort of have, I think, a plan and someone in mind for this blanket. Um, it's not going to be a birthday gift or a uh, Christmas gift or a planned um gift of, of any sort. I'm just going to work on it and when it's done I'm going to give it to the recipient um, and I'm going to just sort of think about them while I'm making it and I think that's kind of a nice way to work on on this project which um, will be quite some time. Um, and I think it's nice to sort of consider uh, your crafting as not something that is tied to a, a all your Christmas knitting or, or birthday knitting, but just to spend some time thinking about someone and making them something because you love them and you and you want to. Um, so there's no expectations of this blanket. It could be finished. It's not going to be finished next month. It could be finished sometime this year. <laughs> uh, it might not. And that's okay. Like, there's no rush. Um, hopefully my loved one isn't going anywhere. <laughs> uh, but my plan is just to keep working on this until it's finished and when it's finished I'm going to tie it up in a bow um, and give it to them. And that's my granny stripe blanket. This has been a very crafty filled episode and I'm really glad that you could join me for all of the m many tangents I've been on this week. Not only has this week or past couple of weeks been full of um, you know, birthday surprises and uh, prizes in the mail. Uh, but it has also been a couple of weeks that have seen my subscribers increase quite a bit. And that has really been um, something that has meant a lot to me. Um, when I started this channel, it wasn't because I thought that I would become a YouTube star. <laughs> I still don't think that. Um, but because I wanted to share, I guess, my interest in knitting um, and other projects and um, I also wanted to take a step out of my comfort zone and maybe become a part of a greater knitting community and a lot of you have um, been watching my episodes lately and have subscribed and that has mean that has meant a lot to me and so I'm very close to uh, sort of a, a minor milestone a uh, a yardstick, I guess, uh, but I'm very close to 100 subscribers. And so 
Uh, when I get to 100 subscribers, I wanted to give uh, a prize. That prize is, um, maybe not surprisingly, some sock yarn, some stripesy sock yarn. This is mustache yarn. It is in the Woodstock 50 colorway. It has any number of different colored stripes. And as you know, striped socks are always nicer with a different colored um, heel, cuff, and toe. So to go with this stripe sock yarn, uh, I'm going to be giving away a skein of Sheepies Metropolis in the Warsaw colorway. Um, so you can make heels, matching heels, cuffs, and toes um, yourself. And, and discover the magic of Sheepies Metropolis Warsaw as the perfect gray. Honestly, it goes with everything. Check it out. Um, so when I uh, when we reach 100 subscribers, which um, I'm cautiously optimistic will happen sometime soon, my plan is to uh, make a post on Instagram, uh, and we'll have a little um, prize draw. Uh, I think probably what will happen is I will uh, make a post on Instagram, and I will also uh, make a post here on YouTube, uh, and we will. Um, I'll ask for you to like and subscribe, and maybe leave a comment, and um, we'll pick a date for a draw for this prize. Um, I'd like to thank you so much for your support, for watching, for kind comments that I've received lately. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to like and subscribe if you would like to continue to join me and possibly be in for a prize um, for some lovely sock yarn. And uh, I just want to let you know how much it means to me that you are joining me every week. And I hope that uh, we can continue to build a community here. I'd love to get to know so many of you more. Uh, I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you find time to do something that you love doing, whether that's embroidery or crochet or knitting or using your child's loom to create hot pads you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that floats your boat or makes you feel creative or satisfied, um, satisfies that creative itch uh, in you. Uh, I hope you find time to do any and all of those things. And I know I plan on knitting a lot. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon. Bye.